Hi, I'm Matthew from Open Resty Edge. Today I'll continue demonstrating the Open Resty Edge product. I'll show how to configure HTTP Basic Authentication in Gateway applications. The HTTP Basic Auth is handled directly by the Gateway servers. As always, let's go to Open Resty Edge's admin web console. This is our sample deployment of the console. Every user has her own local deployment. Let's configure the HTTP Basic Auth credentials for our gateway application. We still use our continuing sample application for the test edge.com domain. Enter this application. Go to the HTTP Basic Auth credentials page. We support adding one or more Basic Auth user groups. Each user group can have one or more users. Add a new Basic Auth user group. Enter the group name tutorial group. This user group is merely for this tutorial. Save it. Add a new basic auth user to this group. Click this button to add a new user. Type in the username Sam. Enter the password. Save it. Now we have a new user in the tutorial group user group. By the way, we can go to the basic tab to edit the user group settings. Here we don't bother. Close this page. Go to the page rules page to actually enable basic authentication. This existing page rule already sets up a reverse proxy to a predefined upstream. We covered this in an earlier tutorial. Let's add a new page rule. Add a new action. Type basic auth to search. Select enable basic authentication option. Select the basic auth user group we just created. Select app tutorial group. The extra app prefix indicates that the user group is only in the scope of the current application. And global basic auth user group names will get the extra prefix global. I will get to the global HTTP basic auth settings later. We set this rule as an always top rule to ensure this rule is always executed first. You can choose any order you want though. Save this rule. As always, we need to make a new configuration release to push out our edited page rule. Click this button. Ship it. It is fully synchronized. Now the new page rule has been pushed to all the gateway clusters and servers. Our configuration changes do not require server reload, restart, or binary upgrade. So it's very efficient and scalable. Let's access the gateway application. We can see that the page triggers the web browser's authentication dialog instead of showing the web page content. First, try clicking the cancel button. We can see the page turns into a 401 unauthorized error page. Refresh the page. And this time, we enter the correct username and password we previously prepared. Now we can access the web page. Next, let's test the HTTP basic auth setting on the command line with the curl utility. On the terminal, we send a test request. We can see that the response is 401 unauthorized. Let's specify the basic auth credential with the U option this time. Here it is the username. And here goes the password in clear text. Run this command. We can see that the response is 200 OK now. We pass the authentication, and the server returned the final response. In addition to configuring basic auth inside Edge applications, we can also configure it in Edge's global configuration. Global auth user groups are visible to all the Edge applications. Go to the global config page. Enter the global basic auth credentials page. Click this button to add a new basic auth user group. Type the group name. Save it. Now that we've created a new global basic auth user group, we can also click the edit button to add a new user for this group. Click this button to add a new user. Type in the username Kelly. Enter the password. And save it. Now we have a new user in the tutorial global group user group. Let's see how to configure the global credential for our gateway application. Close this page. Go to the application list page. Search the testedge.com domain. Let's enter this application. Go to the page rules page. 
Edit this rule. Click the drop down list to switch the user group. We can choose a global user group here. After the change is saved and released, the user credentials in that global user group are used instead. This is what I'd like to cover today.